today I'm going to focus on gut health, what else might be happening in terms of leaky gut, what else might be causing leaky gut and what are the things to look out for and actually what are the areas in the body to look out for. Um, the immune system, so the gut helps to regulate the immune cells. So if you've got low white blood count or you've got any autoimmune conditions, it's really um, vital that you have a look at your gut health because your gut health is so important here. Um, your endorphins, so serotonin is created in the gut. So if you've got any issues with mood or if you've got low serotonin or you have problems sleeping or anxiety, it's really important that you have a look at your gut health and see what's going on. You know, there is a correlation and lots of studies are coming out now about the gut the gut-brain axis, so the gut uses bacteria to kind of communicate to the brain and that involves a lot of neurotransmitters, it involves a lot of endorphins and so if your gut's not talking effectively or communicating with your brain there's going to be some issues there and that might look like anxiety, it might look like depression, again and insomnia, um, learning difficulties, memory problems, so you can see how all of those can be related to the gut. The gut also helps to regulate insulin secretion and also helps to regulate glucose management, so how your glucose is used in the body. So if your gut's not doing that effectively, you're more likely to store glucose as fat rather than use it as energy. Um, so the gut health does influence fat storage and how fat is used in your body and also lipolysis. So the gut will influence lipolysis and lipolysis is how you can go, your body can go and get fat from store and use it as energy for exercise or just your daily life, um, for brain health, that kind of thing. Also your gut helps to turn off and on genes and so we've got good genes, we've got bad genes and the gut, depending on what's going on in the gut, it will positively or negatively impact those genes. Um, and it helps to regulate inflammation. So cortisol can actually, in a, in a bad environment, cortisol can be overstimulated and we produce too much cortisol. And that has a lot to do with gut bacteria as well. But things that can lead to leaky gut, we've got SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. You would have heard so much about that. And that can lead to lactose malabsorption, fructose malabsorption, issues with eating brassica family. Um, Early signs of SIBO are likely to be reflux, um, burping, um, problems in the upper tummy and then as we go down other signs normally are bloating and lots of flatulence when you eat foods, um, particularly smelly flatulence because it's a bacteria that's overgrowth in the small intestine and that produces, that produces bacteria when those foods are consumed. And that bacteria is like a gas. So diverticulitis, you get that pain down the left, the left side, the left side of your flank down there. Um, and it can be quite a sharp pain. And then you might have problems digesting things like seeds and, and those kind of foods, hard foods that get stuck in there. So you need to look out for that, but that can lead to, to leaky gut. Also food intolerance can lead to leaky gut. So we've got food intolerance to dairy, to gluten, to soy, to eggs. Those are kind of like your top, your top ones. And then it's over consuming the same foods. So if you stop having soy and dairy milk and then you have almond milk every day and you've been given a little bit of leaky gut by the gluten, then the almonds, you can actually become sensitive to the almonds. So you need to get your leaky gut sorted out before you sort of start consuming other foods um, in higher amounts as well. So that's why it's important because it can, it can be a cascade effect. Um, if you've got an imbalance of short-chain fatty acids, short-chain fatty acids um, are byproducts of good bacteria. So if you've got good bacteria in your gut, you're going to have a really good array of short-chain fatty acids. Butyrate is one of them, and butyrate actually protects against cancer, it protects against polyps. Um, butter consumed actually has a lot of butyrate and it's one of the only natural foods. But it's a byproduct, a byproduct of those bacteria, and it helps to maintain the gut and manage the gut. Gut. A sign of actually having very low short chain fatty acids might be very, very bad chronic constipation. So that's something to look out for and that's something that can also lead to leaky gut. Other things that can lead to leaky gut, um, so candida, parasites, 
yeast and bacteria. Any overgrowth of those can lead to leaky gut. And where can they come from? Like candida we're going to talk about tomorrow and we will talk about the others, but it can be diet, too much sugar, it can be stress, it can be mold in the environment, it can be um, the type of food you consume. If you consume moldy food as well, you know, um, a lot of people, um, you know, food that's been hanging around for a while that has mold on, that mold, people assume that you eat something bad, your stomach acid is going to kill it. But if you've got low stomach acid or your pancre or you're not producing enough digestive enzymes, you're not going to kill that bacteria or the mold or the fungi and it's going to go into your digestive tract and it's going to start to cause issues. So you really need to make sure your, your food's kind of fresh, your food's not been hanging around, you know, your grains and your nuts and seeds haven't been hanging around. Um, you know, like at supermarkets, don't get the loose nuts and seeds. Make sure that your nuts and seeds are fresh. Smell them to make sure they're not rancid because if things are rancid, that's going to influence your gut negatively, particularly if you don't have a really great functioning digestive tract. So it's really important you, you just think about that, especially if you've got a sensitive digestive tract. If your stomach acid is low, so we really want kind of like a pH 2 or 3 in your stomach acid. We want, it, we want food and bacteria and all sorts to be going down into your stomach, parasites, and we need your stomach acid to be killing it. If you've got a history of taking um, any certain types of medication or taking um, antacid medication or lots and lots of alkalizing water or bicarb of soda um, or even stress, a history of stress, you may not be producing stomach acid effectively and you might get things like reflux and heartburn and indigestion and all of that kind of thing. So you really need to make sure your stomach acid is working a-okay. Digestive enzymes is also very, very important. So you need your pancreas working, you need your liver and your gallbladder working. And if you've had your gallbladder removed, then you need to be making sure that you're really nourishing your liver so it can produce the enzymes, produce the bile to digest the food. So all of these play a pivotal role in preventing and treating leaky gut. All of these organs, particularly um, the gallbladder, the liver and the pancreas. You also need to really watch toxins. So heavy metals like mercury will give you leaky gut, aluminium will give you leaky gut, any heavy metals will go down and they can destroy the gut lining, so you need to be careful with that. Um, toxins in foods like BPAs and chemicals and pesticides, all of those. Um, and then also blockers. I talked about this yesterday. You need to be careful with blockers. Blockers like oxalates. So oxalates in, um, you know, your potatoes and your green leafies you, and lectins as well. You do need to be careful with these if you've got a sensitive gut. Now, I don't want to tell you never to have spinach again because spinach is really healthy, but you just need to make sure you cook it um, and you're not having too much consuming too much raw. The same with legumes. Legumes have got lots of really great starch in. Starch that helps with the weight loss as well. They've got good protein, they've got good array of nutrients. Legumes are actually good for you. So you just need to be aware that if you've got gut problems, you probably need to cut these out or make sure you're preparing them properly. So with legumes, you want to be soaking them for 24 hours, sprouting them to help, help get rid of these anti-nutrients. But um, you may just want to go sort of low for a period of time just while you're working on your gut. And I definitely would say four to six weeks of a solid work on the gut. You know, doing a diet like the Breakthrough Diet or doing a diet, um, if you see my Kickstart Cleanse, it's got a three-day meal plan and, and you, the foods on there are very low impact on the gut, very low inflammation on the gut. So I would, I would start there when you're healing your gut. Take out all the inflammatory foods and take out the blockers like the lectins, take out the blockers like the oxalates, raw oxalates, you know, cooked isn't so bad. Um, and then kind of go from there. And just make sure that you haven't got overexposure to, to heavy metals and to things like mercury. So, you know, make sure you're not con consuming canned tuna all the time. Make sure you're not consuming farmed salmon all the time. And other things leaky gut have been involved in. So this is, you need to think about this, type 2 diabetes. So often if someone's got sugar, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, you need to look to the gut. Inflammatory bowel disease, look to the gut. If someone's been diagnosed with celiac, a lot of people have been diagnosed with celiac later in life. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can remember which one it is, Amy. I'll let you know. Um, if people are being di diagnosed with celiac later in life, 
you need to look at the gut. It's most likely leaky gut that's going on and there's, there's an issue there. So go back to the gut. Asthma, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, any autoimmune diseases. And then we've got other things like rosacea and acne, skin, skin disorders, fatigue, fogginess, memory loss, depression. All of those can be a link to leaky gut. So when, you, when you've got all of these things, you really need to go back and look at the gut. Um, so we have talked a little bit about what to do, and it is a very compl complicated and complex issue because, like we say, it's kind of like, is it the chicken or the egg scenario? But definitely the first thing you need to do, you need to take away the main stresses on the gut. You need to really just peel back the diet and simplify, simplify, simplify. Take away too many natural chemicals. Take away too many synthetic chemicals. Try and take away um, too many um, sort of sprays and any, so, you know, try and go organic. Now, I know in the Breakthrough Program, and if you see the cleanse, the three-day kickstart cleanse, it gives you an example of what a low inflammatory diet is like. So you're looking at, you're looking at low inflammatory vegetables, you're looking at fats, you're looking at gluten-free starches and also starches which, which are lower in your natural food chemicals. So, you know, just going with, um, just going with some proteins, going with some fats like your coconut oil or your butters and things like that or your raw organic olive oil, going with those um, and then just taking out the gluten, taking out the dairy, taking out the soy and starting there, that's where you need to start. So you need to take that inflammation away. Then you need to start healing the gut. You need to start giving the gut really great things. And some people like to do a bit of a fast. You could do like a, a couple of days fasting where you're actually eliminating anything that's going into your digestive tract and that gives it a chance to heal. In that far fast, you could, if you're okay with glutamate, you could do a bone broth fast. You could also do a water aloe fast. Aloe vera is absolutely wonderful. And I'm talking the fresh aloe vera. And if you did a little bit of a two day water fast where you blended the fresh aloe vera with the water um, and maybe just had a little bit of glutamine in that, that would really help to heal the gut. With leaky gut, you, you need to refocus as well. You need to figure out what's happening. Where's it coming from? What's causing it? Is it the food? Is it the toxins? Are you zinc deficient or are you copper deficient or are you calcium deficient? So you need to know what's, what's, what's going on. But as a start, I would definitely do a probiotic, rhamnoses or plantarum to start. And you can also try soil-based probiotic at the same time. You can do slippery elm, so about a teaspoon of slippery elm a day to help heal and seal the gut. And then about 50 milligrams of zinc for, for six weeks. So 50 milligrams of zinc daily for six weeks. And then I would take about one gram of glutamine. You can get these all in a nice mix. Biocuticals do intestamine. Um, nutrition care do gut relief. Metagenics also do a really nice gut powder. So you can get those gut powders and they help, help in, to heal and seal the gut. So doing that along with bacteria and taking all the foods out, that is honestly one of the best ways to do it. So I would highly recommend, you know, just doing those three steps first, taking inflammatory foods out, taking a nice gut healing powder, taking a nice good probiotic, and then also getting your zinc as well. So I would start there and then figure out where it came from. Did it come from antibiotic use when you were younger? Does it come from stress? Does it come from drinking alcohol or taking drugs? So figure out the cause as you're starting to heal the gut and that will give you an idea of how you can begin to ameliorate it. Um, but just on a side note, one of my favorite things for the gut is fresh aloe. So you can get those beautiful aloe plants, you cut off the leaf, cut kind of the inside out of the aloe vera and then blend it in a bit of water. Um, I make a nice hydrating drink with half a lemon, the aloe and some cucumber and water and blend it up. Beautiful in summer, it's so, so freaking high, hydrating, it's lovely. But you could also do a nice gut healing drink for a couple of days with the aloe, maybe put a little bit of glutamine in, blend it up and you sip on that. Great to heal the gut. Um, and as I said, just be careful with bone broth because it is high in glutamate 
and some people are sensitive so it's excitory an excitory neurotransmitter so it might cause a bit of anxiety and that kind of thing so just be careful um, if you know you're sensitive to those and if you know you're you know you're over anxious and you do react and you have got leaky gut you just need to be just need to be wary but using the aloe is a beautiful way to heal the gut so those would be my sort of first off simple tips and what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to go a little bit deeper into candida and understand how candida influences the gut and in terms of it influences hormones and gut health because once we get more into specifics the treatment is different you see what i've just given you is like an overall treatment for leaky gut but once we get into it a little bit deeper we need to do some different things um, and figure out if you've got SIBO it's going to be a little bit different if you've got candida a little bit different parasites a little bit different and so it's just then you just need to tweak it depending on what's going on so um, thank you everyone thanks for joining me